One day, a disaster occurred, and the interdimensional gate of demons, Mado, opened in Japan. The Mado disaster resulted in many casualties, including someone very dear to Yuki and a little silver-haired girl. We skip to a time when Yuki is already 18 years old, cleaning the classroom with his friends. Yuki is a handsome and diligent young man capable of doing all sorts of housework, thanks to the teachings of his beloved older sister. Unfortunately, he lacks special powers obtained from a peach fruit. Only girls can acquire such powers. Even though Yuki can do anything, he remains unnoticed among the girls. In this world, being born male is somewhat disappointing because males cannot possess any powers. Yuki thinks he needs to find a job to survive. One day when Yuki was on his way home, suddenly a fog surrounds him with two children there. I'll call them Jun and Jin. Of course, Yuki is surprised because he recognizes the phenomenon, and it turns out to be the Mado Gate or Demon Dimension. Yuki tries to calm himself and follow the procedure when stranded in the Demon Dimension. Anyone inside the Demon Dimension must remain still and wait for help from the anti-demon cops. Unfortunately, one demon approaches and attacks Yuki. He manages to avoid the attack and tries to escape, but he's trapped in a dead end and more demons close in. Shortly after, Yuki is saved by a 21-year-old girl carrying her demon slave. She is Kyoka from the anti-demon cops. According to her, Yuki is having a bad day as he nearly died from demon attacks. Then, Kyoka begins attacking the remaining demons there. <laughs> Other demons start arriving, and Kyoka decides to take Yuki away from there. Kyoka has the ability to turn demons into her slaves, so if the slave she's carrying dies, she can create a new one from another demon. Shortly after, Nei, Himari, and Shushu help Kyoka attack the pursuing demons. Himari says that if Yuki wants to survive, he must obey Kyoka's orders. Nei tries to expand her detection range to find other victims, and Nei detects that many demons want to surround them. Then, Kyoka instructs Himari, Nei, and Shushu to kill all those demons, and she will evacuate Yuki first. They and her friends manage to find Jun there. When they want to return to the dorm, Jun suddenly asks about Jin. Of course, they are surprised to find out that there is another victim still separated there. On the other side, Kyoka and Yuki see Jin being chased by the demons. Kyoka quickly saves her and killing some demons. Yuki tries to hug and protect Jin from an attacking demon. Then, Kyoka quickly creates a temporary barrier to calm the situation. Kyoka is thinking of a way to handle this situation. Kyoka's fighting skills are excellent, but the powers she gains from the peach fruit limit her fighting style. She can only turn living creatures into her slaves, and the demons she enslaves are very weak. With the limited time of the barrier, Kyoka wants to try something she hasn't done before. Then, Kyoka asks Yuki to help her now so they can get out of this situation. Of course, Yuki accepts the offer because he very much wants to become a hero. After hearing this, Kyoka is honest with Yuki that she will make him her slave. Yuki is shocked because he will become Kyoka's slave and fight against the demons. Yuki lacks such great power. Then, Kyoka talks seriously to Yuki that she will grant power to anyone who becomes her slave. If Yuki is serious about helping her, he must become her slave now. Then, Kyoka instructs Yuki to lick her finger so that Yuki can gain power as her slave. In Yuki's mind, he has never touched a girl's body before. He never expected this rare opportunity to happen to him. Despite that, Yuki immediately licks Kyoka's finger, and his body begins to transform with extraordinary power. <laughs>
After Kyoka hands Jin over to Himuri and the others, Kyoka and Yuki will fight a giant demon formed from piles of demons. Kyoka was very happy because she was finally able to get a very strong slave. Not only that, but Yuki had an incredibly fast reaction. In fact, Yuki could defeat a giant demon easily. Of course, Himuri and Shushu are surprised to see Yuki's transformation. After the battle ends, Kyoka releases her slave chain, and Yuki looks tired there. Then, Kyoka instructs Himuri and the others to quickly take Jun and Jin back to the dorm. Kyoka still wants to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with Yuki. After Himuri and the others leave, Kyoka says that she admires Yuki because he could defeat many demons. From now on, Kyoka decides Yuki to be her slave and Kyoka will explain her abilities to Yuki later. What's more important now is that Kyoka must reward Yuki for working hard against the demons. That is a pleasure for men. Every time Kyoka successfully completes a mission with her slave, she will surely reward her slave with food. That is fair payment for the hard work of her slave. However, this time, she doesn't know what reward to give other than satisfying the desires of men. After Yuki obtains that pleasure, Kyoka says that the demons can enter the earth if not killed soon. Kyoka is determined to become the strong commander of anti-demon Corps 7th squad. With Yuki by her side, Kyoka's peach fruit powers can be maximized. And once again, Kyoka invites Yuki to work as her slave. Then, Yuki says that he's not very good at sports or studying. He can only confidently do housework. Kyoka enthusiastically says that 7th Squad will warmly welcome Yuki, who is good at housework. Moreover, Yuki risked his life to protect Jin earlier, which, according to Kyoka, is the charm of a strong man like Yuki. After thinking for a while, Yuki decides to accept Kyoka's offer. He is confident that his life can be more colorful with Kyoka. Yuki can also avenge his sister, who fell victim to the motto disaster. Moreover, Yuki can obtain pleasure and satisfaction from Kyoka every time he finishes working. This makes Yuki more excited to work as her slave. Then, Kyoka takes Yuki to 7th Squad's dorm and introduces him to the members. The abilities of 7th Squad members are extraordinary, but their habits are very bad at home. Moreover, 7th Squad has great difficulty finding someone willing to work as their caretaker. Men cannot join the anti-demon core, so Yuki also will work there as their caretaker. Of course, Yuki is surprised by what Kyoka said, but he accepts it and will obey their orders as his superiors, including Nei who is only 11 years old. Sometime later, Yuki diligently carried out his housework and truly became the caretaker of the girls there. Shortly after, a demon appeared there, but the demon couldn't attack Yuki. Then Nei greeted Yuki, explaining that the 7th Squad dormitory had been given a strong barrier, and demons with that level of power wouldn't be able to penetrate it. The 7th Squad dormitory area also experienced sudden demon appearances like this more frequently compared to other squad dormitories. The dimension of demons was almost similar to the city of Tokyo, and each side of the area was guarded by the respective anti-demon core squads. After Yuki thanked Nei for his explanation, Himuri suddenly shot the demon there, and scolded Yuki for babbling right in front of the demon. Yuki then told Himuri to be careful with her weapon. Himuri said that she wouldn't miss the target once she aimed at an opponent. She then told Yuki to prepare lunch for the 7th squad members quickly. Himuri's words were a bit harsh, and Yuki responded with a slightly defiant tone. Of course, Himuri was irritated by Yuki's reply. Himuri said that Yuki was lucky to live with the members of the 7th squad, thanks to Kyoka's kindness. After expressing her frustration to Yuki, Himuri and Nei quickly entered the dormitory again to wait for food from Yuki. When Yuki wanted to enter the dormitory, he felt that something was staring at him from a distance. However, Yuki ignored it, thinking it was just his heightened alertness. During the seventh squad meal, Himuri was the one who often wanted to have seconds. The food Yuki cooked was delicious and nutritionally balanced, beneficial for their physical development. Kyoka said that Yuki could clean the spare room and the observation tower afterward. Yuki asked Kyoka once again if he would always work like this. Kyoka stated that she would use Yuki when something happened. 
So, while being vigilant against demon attacks, Yuki would perform housework according to his skills. Himari immediately pointed her sword at Yuki, suspecting that Yuki objected to Kyoka's absolute orders. Kyoka reassured Himari and explained to the members that Yuki was essential to her, despite Himari dislike him. Kyoka promised that if Yuki dared act strangely towards them, Kyoka would twist him off. <laughs> After finishing cleaning the observation tower, Yuki was surprised to see Himari about to bathe in the hot springs there. Yuki quickly hid to avoid being noticed by Himari. However, Himari felt someone watching her from the observation tower. While Yuki was still imagining Himari's body, he heard Shushu's voice teasing him. Yuki was confused because Shushu was not visible to him. Then, Shushu returned to his normal size and found out that Yuki was a lecherous man. Shushu immediately took a photo of Yuki, Nei, and Himari in the hot spring. Of course, Yuki was frightened because Shushu had evidence that could threaten his life. Shushu then stated the conditions Yuki had to comply with. If Yuki didn't want the photo to be shown to Kyoka and others, he had to be Shushu's slave until Shushu was satisfied. Yuki obeyed Shushu's wishes, and Shushu took Yuki to her room. Yuki tidied up Shushu's messy belongings while Shushu continued reading romance manga. Shushu's heart didn't race at all when reading romance manga, she preferred action and battles over romance. Shushu also tried to chat with Yuki, but Yuki only gave brief answers, and Yuki had to delete the photos from Shushu's phone. Shortly afterward, Shushu got bored with reading romance manga and threw her phone among the scattered clothes. Yuki discreetly took Shushu's phone. But unfortunately, Shushu noticed it. Instead, Shushu accused Yuki of being bold for wanting to touch something not permitted by Shushu. However, Shushu allowed Yuki to touch her underwear that Yuki had just handled. <laughs> then, Shushu teased Yuki because she enjoyed Yuki's reactions. Moreover, Shushu viewed Yuki not as a man but as a pet that could be played with and enjoyed. When Yuki tried to tidy up Shushu's underwear, Shushu intentionally took another photo. According to Shushu, it was a great photo to show to others. After Yuki finished tidying up Shushu's underwear, he wanted to do something else. Yuki thought that if Kyoka saw those photos, he shouldn't have a problem with them. Shushu took those photos, not because Yuki intentionally pursued his lustful desires. Yuki then heard Kyoka and Himari practicing hand-to-hand -hand combat outside the dormitory. Kyoka also demonstrated good attacks to Himari through a sudden demon appearance. <laughs> Of course, Yuki trembled even more because he really didn't want to receive those punches from Kyoka. As much as possible, Yuki had to delete those photos from Shushu's phone. Shushu invited Yuki to enter her room again to massage Shushu's shoulders. After a few minutes, Shushu seemed to enjoy the massage as Yuki's hands were gentle and accurate. Well, actually, Yuki was also fascinated by Shushu's large breasts, so it was mutually beneficial for both of them. Then, Shushu asked why Yuki was skilled at massaging. Yuki answered that he was used to massaging his sister. From there, they chatted about their situations and families, especially about Shushu. Shushu's father had passed away long ago, and Shushu was the youngest of three sisters. Shushu always studied at an all-girls school, so she never spoke with boys her age. But since she met Yuki, Shushu became curious about male figures and always paid attention to Yuki. Because Shushu was increasingly interested in Yuki, she deliberately made Yuki her slave. She found it fun and exciting. Moreover, Shushu wanted to join the anti-demon corps because she felt the thrill of defeating demons, like the main characters in adventure manga. After Yuki finished massaging Shushu, Shushu invited Yuki to play a fighting game. Shushu said that there was a punishment for the loser. Between the two of them, they had to remove their clothes one by one. Of course Yuki accepts the challenge and he will defeat Shushu decisively. Some time passed, and it turned out that Yuki's expectations were too exaggerated because in reality, Yuki was the one losing repeatedly. Yuki had to remove his underwear, and it was his last piece of clothing. Initially, Yuki didn't want to be naked in front of Shushu because he would surely be labeled as a lecherous man. He also warned Shushu in a gentle manner. The essence of his message was that the instincts of men could be dangerous if they engaged in lewd actions and harmed women. Yuki didn't want that to happen to Shushu. However, Shushu didn't care about that because she was curious about Yuki's naked body. Shushu chuckled a bit because Yuki turned out to be a gentle man when treating women. Moreover, Yuki shouldn't worry about it because Shushu couldn't lose to a man. Then, Shushu immediately increased the size of her body slightly, restrained Yuki, and directly removed Yuki's underwear. After Shushu saw Yuki's bird, she blushed a little and was fascinated. 
Shu Shu also laughed at Yuki's bird because it was cute, small, and funny. It seemed that Yuki's dignity as a man was at stake there. He forgot that Shushu had the ability to change her body size. Shortly afterward, a giant demon appeared in front of the Seventh Squad dormitory. Kyoka and the others were currently at the central headquarters, so Shushu would handle the giant demon alone. turned out that another giant demon appeared there. The giant demon became larger as the demons piled up on each side. Shushu tried to fight it, but the giant demon had greater strength than her. Therefore, Shushu would enlarge her body size again to be able to fight it. Unfortunately, Shushu couldn't change her size anymore because she was already exhausted. Of course, the giant demon continued to attack Shushu until her clothes were torn everywhere. Yuki had to help Shushu quickly, but he couldn't transform without Kyoka by his side. Then, Yuki wanted to try something to transform into his demon form. Yuki searched for Kyoka's gloves in the laundry area, and tried to smell them. Yuki felt that this method successfully triggered his power. Because of that, Yuki searched for another piece of Kyoka's clothing to smell her body scent even stronger. Yuki would likely be labeled as a severe pervert, but only this method could trigger his power. On the other hand, Shushu's clothing only covered her large breasts. The giant demon continued to attack Shushu, and shortly after, Yuki arrived with a half-demon transformation. Yuki instructed Shushu to restrain the giant demon. Yuki would attack in any way possible. Of course, Shushu was astonished after hearing Yuki's determination. Shushu immediately restrained the giant demon, and Yuki defeated it very quickly. When Yuki was still floating in the air, his power disappeared because there was a specific time limit for transformation without Kyoka. However, Yuki was able to survive by landing right between Shushu's large and supple breasts. Of course, Yuki panicked because he didn't intend anything inappropriate in this situation. Shushu blushed after seeing Yuki's struggle to help her defeat the giant demon. Then, Shushu returned to her normal body shape, placing Yuki on the ground. Shushu was sure that Yuki had forced himself to transform for her sake. Then, Shushu realized that Yuki was truly naked there. She also saw that Yuki's bird was standing manly, causing Shushu to change her mind about Yuki's bird. <laughs> Then, Yuki and Shushu reported the giant demon incident to Kyoka and the others. While massaging Yuki's body, Kyoka told Shushu to increase her stamina again. Shushu shouldn't underestimate anyone who became her enemy. Since Yuki helped her, Shushu should be thankful by assisting Yuki in doing housework. Kyoka continued to massage Yuki because Yuki's body was in extraordinary pain after transforming into a half-demon. After Kyoka and the others went to their rooms, Shushu chatted briefly with Yuki. Shushu had taken a photo when she and Yuki were naked earlier. Shushu became more interested in Yuki and hoped that Yuki would continue to be with her. Then, Shushu returned to her room, and Yuki felt that he had given up on deleting those photos. On the other hand, another squad is facing a very powerful demon. They are truly struggling and unable to escape or fight against the demon. Shortly afterward, there is a girl who controls the demon as her slave. She senses Yuki's presence in the demon dimension and must meet him as quickly as possible. Sometime later, Kyoka invited Yuki to go to the headquarters of the 5th squad to handle some documents. When they were outside the gate of the 5th squad, Kyoka told Yuki to wait outside the headquarters. After Kyoka finished handling the documents, she approached Yuki in casual and mature attire. Of course, Yuki was enchanted by Kyoka's beauty. Then Kyoka invited Yuki to visit Kyoka's family cemetery. Kyoka said that she truly wanted to avenge the demon she hated the most, whom she called One Horn. When the motto disaster struck the earth, the demons were already eradicated by the anti-demon core. Unfortunately, one horned demon survived and escaped to the demon dimension again. After that, Kyoka would return to the dormitory because she had to always be on alert there. Then Yuki suggested stopping by a nearby cafe for a while. Yuki heard that the parfait there was delicious, and Kyoka would surely like it. 
Initially, Kyoko refused Yuki's invitation because she was very concerned about the situation at the 7th Squad dormitory. But Yuki insisted, and Kyoko followed Yuki's wish. While waiting for their parfait orders, Yuki said that he understood what Kyoko was feeling. Yuki also lost his beloved sister during the Mato disaster. Yuki explained that Kyoko could get sick if she kept forcing herself to work continuously. So, this break time was also crucial for her. After their ordered parfait arrived, Kyoka truly enjoyed it, and Yuki was increasingly captivated by Kyoka's reaction. A few minutes later, the trumpet alarm from the Demon Dimension dormitory sounded on Kyoka's phone. Of course, the long alarm sound was an emergency call, and they had to quickly return to the Demon Dimension dormitory. After arriving at the 7th Squad dormitory, Kyoka wanted to change clothes for a moment, and she told Yuki to come into her room. Yuki was initially confused and just daydreamed in Kyoka's room. Kyoka immediately clarified that this was a reward for Yuki's hard work in quickly bringing her to the dormitory. Kyoka understood that Yuki must want a reward that matched his deepest desires. Because of that, Kyoka told Yuki to take off all her clothes. <laughs> then the 7th squad gathered in the meeting room. They and the others reported that a very large demon nest had appeared there. This had never happened before, and the seventh squad had to kill the demons there as soon as possible. Himari apologized for calling Kyoka during such a relaxed time, but Kyoka didn't mind and told the seventh squad to go to the demon nest location immediately. After they arrived there, Shushu and Himari killed the demons successively before they gathered into a giant demon. Shortly after, a very fast attack came towards Shushu. It turned out the attack came from a girl riding one horned demon, and she immediately attacked Himari there. Kyoka was surprised because the girl carried a peach. Then Kyoka asked, Who are you? The girl answered that she opposed the anti demon core. The girl also asked about her brother's whereabouts to Kyoka. Her brother was the most handsome man in the world. Kyoka didn't understand the girl's meaning, and Kyoka thought that there might be another creature like her. Then the girl attacked Kyoka and Yuki with extraordinary power. When the girl wanted to mention her brother's name, suddenly there was a giant demon there that disturbed her. Of course, the girl was angry and easily killed the giant demon. After seeing that, Yuki remembered the gaze of his older sister that resembled the girl. Then Kyoka realized that the girl was likely the leader of the demons there. The girl laughed because Kyoka completely did not understand about Mato. Then she attacked Kyoka and Yuki successively and separated them. After the girl threw Kyoka far away, she pulled Yuki's body and was about to kill him. But after the girl looked into Yuki's eyes, she understood that it was Yuki, her beloved brother. When the girl wanted to touch Yuki's face, Kyoka attacked her, and the girl was slightly injured. Then the girl left with her one-horned demon. Of course, Kyoka was very angry and wanted to avenge them immediately. Kyoka would make them feel the same suffering as when the citizens screamed that night. When Kyoka called Yuki with her anger, suddenly Kyoka fell silent for a moment because Yuki was helping the injured Shushu there. Because of that, Kyoka changed her mind and immediately returned to the dormitory carrying Himari and Shushu. In Kyoka's mind, she was too absorbed in her anger. Her carelessness almost caused her to lose her valuable subordinates. After arriving at the dormitory, Nei immediately treated Himari and Shushu's wounds. Then Kyoka gave a special reward to Yuki as usual. This time, Yuki really wanted Kyoka to do a foot job on his bird. Of course, Kyoka did not expect that Yuki would ask for something like this. While Kyoka was doing a foot job on Yuki, she said that she owed Yuki because he cared for Himari and Shushu. Kyoka saw for the first time a demon that could speak human language like that girl. The girl's power was not something an ordinary human could do. Kyoka was sure that someday she would meet them again. When that time came, Kyoka would unleash all her abilities to attack them. Then Yuki said that the girl reminded him of his lost sister during the Mato disaster. Although it was just Yuki's intuition, he felt that the girl also recognized him when they met earlier. Kyoka did not fully believe Yuki's assumption because she had never heard of humans turning into demons. Then Kyoka was confused because Yuki's facial expression really looked like he was enjoying the foot job she was doing. Then Yuki said that he felt this pleasure because he was also looking at the beauty of Kyoka's lower body. <laughs> Daime! <laughs> 
The next day, Yuki still remembered the gaze of the girl that resembled his sister. Even the power of the one-horned demon was extraordinarily strong compared to him. Then, Shushu suddenly surprised Yuki there and thanked him for saving her yesterday. Shushu would help Yuki wash his back, and Yuki was not allowed to look back. Shushu whispered to Yuki that she was currently naked. While Shushu was washing Yuki's back, Yuki thought that Shushu must be playing with him again. Generally, it was impossible for a single girl to enter the bathroom and be naked in front of a man. Yuki knew that Shushu must want to see his reaction again. Yuki would not be fooled by Shushu's mischievous tricks this time, and he immediately turned around. <laughs> Shortly after, 6th Squad, Tenka, and Azuma Yochiho came to the 7th Squad dormitory because they had business with Kyoka. Then Tenka approached Yuki because Yuki was a trending topic among the girls in the anti-demon core. Yuki was momentarily silent when locking eyes with Tenka. Then Yuki quickly informed Kyoka that Tenka and Azuma had arrived there. <laughs> Tenka visited the dormitory of 7th Squad to discuss the human-shaped demons that appeared in the demon dimension. 6th and 7th Squad had to collaborate to gain enough power to fight against these demons. 3rd Squad had also faced these demons directly twice before. Therefore, the merging of these squads seemed like a reasonable solution. Ichiho then teased Himari about the incident yesterday. Having heard that Himari had fainted after being attacked by a demon, as a good older sister, Yachiho told Himari to go home because she had embarrassed the Azuma clan. Within 7th squad, Himari had undoubtedly been a burden all this time and was not reliable to Kyoka. Himari truly suppressed her anger after hearing Yachiho's mocking words. Then, Kyoka suggested organizing a competition between the squads and the demon dimension, 6th squad versus 7th squad, one on one. This way, Yachiho and Himari could showcase their abilities. Tenka accepted the offer, stating that 7th Squad could bring additional members if they wished, while 6th Squad would be represented solely by Yachiho. After Tenka and Yachiho returned to their headquarters, Himari asked Kyoka for permission to borrow her power. Himari wanted to use Yuki as her slave in this competition. Kyoka explained that her power required a sacrifice of the body, but Himari insisted on using it, ready to sacrifice anything. Yuki, surprised and slightly annoyed, didn't understand why Himari would make her a slave. Moreover, Himari shouldn't have needed to make such a sacrifice. Himari, however, was determined to win with Yuki. She immediately took Yuki for training in the demon dimension, away from the dormitory. Himari revealed that her power wasn't about creating weapons from her body but rather about learning the powers of others. Yuki asked if Himari deeply understood Kyoka's power, to which Himari replied that she just needed to sacrifice her body later. Yuki hesitated because Himari didn't fully grasp the weaknesses of Kyoka's power. Many demons started appearing around them, and Himari instructed Yuki to lick and kiss her hand. <laughs> After killing the demons there, Yuki was still puzzled by Himari's decision. There should have been other powers Himari could use besides Kyoka's. When Himari responded to Yuki's words, her body automatically moved to lift her skirt. Himari was confused because she had done something embarrassing in front of Yuki, and her body wouldn't move when she wanted it to. Yuki explained that it was the main weakness of Kyoka's power. After using it, the user will grant the slave's deepest wish. Yuki actually doesn't understand his deepest desires, because they follow a man's natural instincts, and Yuki can't guess what he wants. Hearing this, Himari finally understood the meaning of sacrificing her body. She didn't know what to do now. Yuki teased Himari a bit, saying her body would move again once he accepted it. If Himari didn't believe him, Yuki would prove it by keeping her in that embarrassing pose. Himari then screamed in annoyance because she couldn't move her body at all. Because of that, Yuki received the reward, and Himari then began to undress, leading to a beautiful scene. <laughs> Hobby 
On their way back to the dormitory, Yuki questioned Himari again, asking why she didn't use other powers. Himari explained that if there were compatible powers, she would use them, but unfortunately, many powers didn't suit her. As a result, she couldn't unleash those powers to their original owner's extent. For example, if she borrowed Shushu's power, she could only enlarge her breasts, showing that Shushu's power wasn't compatible. But Yuki didn't want Himari to force herself because the main weakness of Kyoka's power was such rewards. Himari scolded Yuki, stating she would continue to use Kyoka's power no matter what. Himari was willing to do vulgar things to win against Yecheho. Yuki then asked why Himari insisted on using Kyoka's power, and Himari, after a moment of silence, began to tell her background to Yuki. The Azuma clan was a respected family with many achievements in the demon dimension. All of Himari's siblings had extraordinary abilities, but she was the exception. Despite being the clan's hope, Himari was still ostracized because of her abilities. Since childhood, Himari had always tried hard and learned many things. Unfortunately, she always faltered before something important happened. During significant events, she couldn't use her abilities to their maximum. That's why the power Himari had now was learning, with such a weakness. Girls who obtained powers from the peach fruit got abilities based on their personalities or lives. This competition was her first opportunity to prove her abilities. So, whether she liked it or not, Himari had to make Yuki her slave. Additionally, Himari wanted to become a hero like Kyoka. If she could defeat Yecheho, she believed she could become a different person. Himari wanted to contribute more to Seventh Squad. She wanted to train continuously with Yuki to develop a good combination of finishing moves. Yuki admired Himari's determination because it was almost similar to Yuki's desire to become a hero. Yuki also realized that he had been fighting recklessly all this time. If he trained with Himari, his abilities could undoubtedly grow and further assist Kyoka. Therefore, Yuki wholeheartedly agreed to help Himari this time. In the coming days, Yuki and Himari will continue to train relentlessly to develop their chemistry. Ichiho's strength lies in manipulating, stopping, and reversing time. However, this power is also the main source of Yechiho's weakness. She will become tired after frequent use of her abilities, providing an opportunity for Yuki and Himari to prevail. They must attack Yechiho with extraordinary speed to catch her off guard. Then, Himari teaches Yuki to focus on gathering all his strength to a single point in his body. <laughs> After the training session, as usual, Himari rewards Yuki. However, this time, the reward is not explicit, as Yuki may only want to be pampered by Himari. In the following training days, Kyoka visits them to see Yuki in action. Kyoka admires Himari because Yuki's demon form is very different from Kyoka's own. Himari even teaches new techniques to Yuki. Kyoka then advises Himari that to master Kyoka's power, she must also understand the essence of the bond between master and slave. By the way, Shushu feels a bit down because she hasn't been playing with Yuki lately. When Himari rides on Yuki, she instructs Yuki to gather his strength to a single point again and tries to attack a demon there. With Himari by Yuki's side, Yuki can harness a stronger power. Even though Yuki feels satisfied with the training results, he is exhausted from exerting such immense power. Yuki then sees Himari slowly undressing, and, of course, that is Yuki's reward for the day, which he gladly accepts. <laughs> The day of the competition has arrived, and 6th Squad arrives at 7th Squad's dormitory earlier than the competition schedule. On the other hand, Himari and Shushu are bathing in a hot spring while chatting. Shushu asks if Himari's combo with Yuki will be finished after this competition. Himari replies that it's the agreement because Yuki belongs to Kyoka. Himari can't continue using Yuki with lewd rewards like that. In essence, Himari needs to focus on the battle today and not think about those indecent rewards. The results of this competition will be known to the entire anti-demon core squad, and their perception of Kyoka is now at stake for Himari. Shortly after, Sahara from 6th Squad joins them in the hot spring. Sahara is the type of girl who rarely leaves the dormitory. She even falls asleep quickly when bathing for a few minutes. 
After Himari finishes bathing, Yachiho approaches her to apply pressure once again. Himari states that she won't embarrass herself in this competition. She is confident she will win against Yachiho. Yachiho mocks Himari again, claiming she already knows what the outcome will be. Every time Himari speaks like that, she tends to experience the opposite fate, a pattern that repeated when Himari lived in the Azuma family residence. Shortly after, Yuki arrives to pick up Himari for the competition. Yuki reassures and convinces Himari that they have trained hard for days. <laughs> When they reach the battle area, they will be protected by the power of Bizen Jinna. Jinna's barrier can also heal any injuries as long as they are inside the barrier. Even if a thousand demons attack Jinna's barrier, it cannot be destroyed. The defeat is determined by anyone who surrenders or cannot continue the fight. Before the battle begins, Yachiho declares that she will definitely take Himari back to the Azuma family residence. Himari responds confidently that she believes she will win the competition today. Himari's original power has developed far beyond her past self. Yuki starts licking and kissing Himari's hand to transform into his demon form. Then, the battle begins. <laughs> Do you 